Hello and welcome to our series, Exiles. My name is Walter Martinez. I'm the pastor here at Central and Choctaw SDA, and I'm thankful that tonight you're joining us on this series, Exiles, journeying through the book of 1 Peter. We're gonna be looking at 1 Peter, specifically chapter one, I'm sorry, chapter two, verses 13 to 25. And before we begin, I wanna ask you a favor. If you're watching online, please navigate to our website, centralsda.church forward slash prayer dash meeting. And it's kind of long. That's why we've put it on the screen for you. We're encouraging you to go there to the link to uh, be able to access the handout, to download that handout and be able to follow along um, and do this uh, personal Bible study if you're online um, as soon as I'm done doing the introduction. So here's what you can expect. This evening, I'm going to do three things. Number one, take some time to pray over this uh, time of study. Number two, give kind of an introduction to the theme for tonight. And number three, we're going to take a look at the outline of this particular section. So I know that some of you are doing this live, and I'm super excited because this allows you to be able to have some fellowship with one another to not only watch the video, the introduction, but to also take some time to connect with each other and to pray with one another, and that's super important. So I know some of you that are journeying with us here online are probably thinking, well, how can I be a part of that experience? Well, if you're here in the Oklahoma City area, uh, don't hesitate to send me an email to the email that you see here on your screen, centralsda, the number one, at gmail.com. centralsda, the number one, at gmail.com. And that way I can send you or forward you our address and um, help you to be able to stay in contact with those at Choctaw or Central Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So that's how you can get a hold of us and be a part of this experience live. Now, having explained all that, I want to go into the first thing that I promised that we would do, and that is to take some time to pray over our study. So please bow your head with me and let's study together. And let's pray together and then go into our study together. Father in heaven, I wanna thank you so very much for the privilege of studying your word. I know that this is a subject that we are um, all going to benefit from, but we all need your help in processing it and in being able to internalize it. Holy Spirit, we ask for wisdom. We ask that you would help remove distractions and Lord, we just uh, want to be able to take this time to connect with you and to be changed by you. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I want to introduce this, the theme tonight uh, with two stories. The first story is of my son, Ethan. Before he was three years old, we had the opportunity to take him to a theme park. And now this theme park was like a huge deal for him. Little did I know that years later, now he's, he's five years old, years later he would be so infatuated with these kinds of animals. But back then, this was kind of like the beginnings, right? The origins of Ethan's love for sea creatures. Mia had been, my 10-year-old daughter, Mia had been uh, to this theme park before, so she kind of knew what to expect. But this was Ethan's first time. So all of us were excited for him. Uh, we went down to California, we were there with my parents, we all went together and waited in the car to get in, get a parking spot, waited in line to get in. Now that we are in, we are waiting in line after we've decided where we're going to go to go see this special show that we thought would be you know, a great way to, to kick off our adventure together. Well, wouldn't you know it, Ethan got tired of waiting and he was done. He wanted to run around and have fun and do his own thing. But in order to get into this special, spectacular show that we all knew he was going to enjoy, we had to submit to, you know, the rule, following the rules of being able to wait in line and then going down the row and finding your seat and sitting down for the show to begin. We tried really hard to encourage Ethan and he just wouldn't have it. Finally, the line started to move, so we did get a chance to go in, and he's now anticipating what happens next. The show starts, and in come the dolphins, 
and they start doing their tricks and their acrobatics and Ethan, the, the look on his face, he was, he was on cloud nine. I mean, he'd never seen anything like this before on television or live. So this was like a first time for him. And he's watching the dolphins doing their tricks and, and the trainers blowing their whistles and feeding them fish. And it was just like too much for him, right? His eyes were huge. And he was just, uh, just in love with everything that he was watching. I, I think what would have happened if we had given up? What if we had just walked away? And Ethan had missed out on that precious opportunity to experience um, the dolphin show. To get there, he had to submit quite a few times just to be able to watch the show. And it wouldn't be fair for me to just talk about my son and to say, oh, look at him. He had a really hard time submitting, had a hard time following the orders that he was given, and um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. And I, I'm not going to talk about myself as a two-year-old. I'm going to talk about myself within the last couple of weeks just to make this real. So here's the second illustration for you. Many of you know that I've taken up cycling. I have a love for cycling now. And when I first started, I started on a kind of a mountain bike. Um, didn't quite work out like I had thought. So I sold that bike, got a new bike, got a road bike. And I thought this was it. Then I met a friend. Um, <laughs> I'm... I'm deciding whether or not I should mention his name. Well, anyway, you're watching, you know who you are. And I met a friend and he um, kindly but gently told me that this bike uh, wasn't gonna help me improve my skills or grow the way that perhaps a different bike would. So uh, I f at first I resisted that. I remember going home and I knew that he had done it in such a kind, gentle way, but I was like, I like my bike, you know, I put some good money into this and I don't think I can afford another one right now. So, um, Lo and behold, I, I, I finally submitted to, to listening a little bit more to him, and we did end up upgrading my bike, and uh, you know it, it was phenomenal, the difference. And my, my ride, everything felt much better. Then, little did I know, it wasn't just the bike, but it suddenly became the very things that I wore. Like, are you telling me I can't wear these kinds of shorts or this kind of shirt? It's not that I couldn't wear them, the idea was, if you put on the cycling gear, and mind you, I always thought that it was hilarious to watch people in their little, little bike shorts and their and their and their tight shirts and things like that. And I was like, I'm never gonna wear that. I'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> that there is padding in those shorts, in areas where I don't have padding. So once I got that on, and once I got over that mental, you know, acrobatic that I had to do to be able to wear this suddenly was really comfortable and I could ride longer distances and enjoy more of the ride. So then it was a bike, clothes, what's next? Well, my friend introduced me to clip, clipless pedals, um, clipless shoes. This I'm still on the fence on and I know you're watching and I know you're probably thinking to yourself, what do I have to do to convince this guy? The problem is when you clip into your bike, you're at the mercy of your bike when you fall. Granted, you need to learn to unclip before you can you know, come to a complete stop. And I've already fallen three times. The second time was so bad that I didn't want to ride with uh, these stinking pedals anymore. But I'm giving it a shot. I'm submitting to it a little bit more just to see how it goes. Um, you know, I had to invest a little bit of money to get these kinds of shoes anyway, so I might as well keep trying until I get a feel for it. All of this to say, I was riding with my friend the other day, and uh, he taught me how to draft, how to get in nice and close behind him so that I didn't have to exert as much energy. So we're pedaling, we're going pretty fast, and a thought crossed my mind. I'm able to keep up with my friend because I have uh, submitted to the idea of getting a new bike, and because I'm wearing the clothing that allows me to go longer distances because it's comfortable now. And I'm wearing these pedals, these shoes that clip in and allow me to continue um, putting the energy in, in where I can be most effective. And as I'm riding behind my friend, I think, you know what? I'm glad that I did this. Still on the fence on those shoes. I'm glad <laughs> that I did this because now I can experience cycling at a totally different level. But like Ethan, 
what would have happened if I stopped all the way back on my bike? I wouldn't be at the place that I am now. I wouldn't have improved my skills or enjoy the distance or, or the riding as much as I do now. But I had to kind of, in a sense, count my losses and uh, try out these new things and evolve and change with the process, all submitting to what my friend's recommendations were. Um, I'm going to say this. We as human beings have a really hard time submitting, don't we? We resist, we complain, we clamor for our rights and our freedom. And really, it's no different with God, is it? Our relationship with God, we do the very same things with Him. We uh, want to do things our way. And often we resist when God gives us a call or He gives us, um, He wants more of us. And we just kind of, I don't know, we don't like the idea of God having control of our lives or submitting to Him. But here's the thing, what we're going to learn from Peter tonight is that there's a much bigger picture when it comes to submitting. When it comes to submitting, Peter's going to teach us two main things. Number one, in the end, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so worth it. And number two, because of the process that he lays out for us here in chapter two, we're going to learn that submitting to God is the only way that we can truly submit fully. And in submitting to God, here's the cool part, in submitting to God, we are becoming more like Jesus. So if I were to review all of what I've just said, it would simply be these two things. Number one, submission is worth it because you're becoming more like Jesus. Submission is worth it because you're becoming more like Jesus. Cool? Now I promised you an outline. So I'm quickly going to go through this outline. You're going to go in more detail If you're live, you're going to have a chance to discuss this with one another. If you're at home, take the handout and go through 2 Peter uh, verses 13 to 25 with the handout to kind of dig a little bit deeper and look at what Peter is talking about. But this is just kind of a broad overview of what you're going to be looking at. Peter tonight is talking about submission. And there's three areas that he's talking about submission in. The first area is submission to authority or to the government. Yes, you heard me correctly. Some of you are like, ah, submit to the government? Are you kidding? Um, You know, you'll you'll probably use examples from our COVID experience. Like if you had only, if you only seen what 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 the city council has come up with and how they've done a horrible job and they've botched things up when it comes to doing things with COVID. Or have you seen what the president has tweeted lately? Here's the thing, what you're going to find about Peter is that he is going to talk about submission, but he's going to talk about submission to all authority. That's probably going to make some of you uncomfortable. I know it made me uncomfortable, but it's important to remember it's worth it and it's helping us become more like Christ. It's worth it, and it's helping us to become more like Christ. See, Peter's going to also speak about submission to masters. This doesn't necessarily translate to our day and age, because in Peter's day, it was much different. The scenario, the circumstances, the time period was much different. But I believe that we can relate what he's saying to places of our like work, our workplaces, or uh, situations like in church with church leadership, it's important for us to remember that it's never okay to talk bad about our boss or to talk behind our supervisor's back or to join in in negative conversations about your administration. That's not what Peter advises or recommends. Instead, Peter is going to be teaching us that it's important for us to submit because, as we've learned, submission... Uh, is worth it and submission helps us to become more like Christ. So there's a third area, one last area that Peter talks about submission in, and that is the area of learning to submit to God. And this is an area that's so important for us because this is really where everything comes together. Um, this is what it means to be able to, to, to learn submission the way that Jesus submitted And as you look at that, as you read that, let it just hit you what Jesus had to go through while he was here on earth. He's God. He's, you know, 
the divine incarnate. And if he is divine and yet human going through all these motions, who are we to, to get so upset to be uh, just like having road rage and having just anger in our pity parties? And No, we're exiles. We're called to live above that. We're asked by God to be lights in this world, to be examples to others, to point them to a different world, to point them to a different kingdom. So, I mean, yes, I get it. We all have those feelings and we have those human uh, tendencies to want to have our own rights and to have our own freedom and to do things our own way. But submission means letting go of those things and allowing God to take control and allowing others to lead. I hope, my prayer is, I, I pray and I hope that as you go through this lesson, you will begin to realize that submission to Jesus actually will help you to be kind to those in leadership above you. Submission to Jesus will actually help you to be respectful of those in authority. And that submission to Jesus will actually help you become courteous to those who lead. These are all areas that we need to grow in. And only Jesus can help us move towards submission. Some of us have a really hard time submitting. We want things done our way, according to our agenda, or we wish that people would just listen to our wisdom because then they'd finally get it, right? We fail to realize that everybody feels that way too. And that's why we never, never come to a complete agreement on any particular subject. We're divided as a country. We're divided as, as a church. We're divided in our homes. It's the world we live in today, but God calls us to live above that. And only He can help us to live the kind of life that we are called to live. We begin, Peter is helping us understand, that process by learning to submit. Remember, submission is worth it because it is helping us to become more like Jesus. So we've had an opportunity to be able to pray to give an introduction to the theme of submission, to look at the outline. Now it's your turn to be able to go, if you're live, go into your time of study together and discuss these things and to grow deeper and spend some time in prayer. Or if you're in private and you're online and you're doing this on your own, to take out the handout, answer the questions, and go through the Bible verses, letting the Holy Spirit hit your heart. My prayer is that we will grow through this process of continuing the uh, call to be exiles here on this planet. As we close this evening, this first introduction portion, I just want to say the following. May you begin to see your Savior in a new light. And may that light captivate you to become more and more like Jesus. And may you, through the process of becoming more and more like Him, learn to see that it is worth it. Blessings as you study, and we'll see you next week.